Hi, my name's Paul Church from Clarity Stamp here in the UK. Welcome to another episode of YouTube Tuesday. Today, I'd like to showcase some of our 4x4 aperture dies. And in the more recent collection, we've got some beautiful, beautiful birds. So in this particular collection, we've got a pair of wrens, a pair of wax wings, and a pair of crested tits. In today's card, I'm gonna show you how you can take some beautiful birds and use them for your Christmas cards. So today, I'm gonna to be using the pair of wrens. And look at this card here. Isn't this gorgeous? So again, you, it's a perfect design for everyday cards, for the men in your life, um, but it also works perfectly just by adding some color to the body, um, perfect as a Christmas card. So where do we start? Okay, I'm gonna take my die and I'm gonna take a five by five card blank, which I've just chopped in half, and I'm gonna position my die in the middle. One of the great things about our dies is that they have a special coating on them. Um, so that's why they're colored blue. And what that means is it means that the actual die releases very easily from the cardstock or the paper um, and also all the little bits fall out quite easily as well. So I'm gonna bring my cutting plates into play. So I've got, I'm using the Gemini. So I've got the clear plate, poly pocket, my piece of card and my die cutting side down. Then on top of that, I'm gonna put my frosted plate. Then I'm gonna use my magnetic shim. And finally, another clear plate. So they work with all leading die cutting machines. These particular dies are four by four, and you'll see that I've used a, a five by five car blank. So depending on the, the mouth of your machine, that would be really the only restriction on, um, on using them. So we'll just slowly peel off the low tack tape. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do, let's just bring that over there, turn it over, and you'll see how easy, it, look at this mess. If I was at home, it'd be all on the floor. So I'm just gonna use the little tool in one brush, okay? And then if I take a piece of white card, then you'll see, oh, there's a few little bits there, and a little bit there. But they do really fall away so easily. So now we've got our beautiful design. I mean, I love the just the black on the white. I think that's a, a stunning card. And again, if you do the white on the black, very, very quick and easy. So let me just clear this off. And again, I tend to just tap it on my hands, really. Um, and you'll see that that, where's that white card gone? It'll probably help. That is now completely clean. Absolutely. And one of the, the biggest bugbears I had from using dyes in the past was that it would take you forever just to clean out the dye. So we'll just clean off this here. Uh, my bin. I don't know where the bin is, but that'll do. Okay, so we've got our lovely topper. We're gonna to pop that to one side. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna choose a backing paper. Now, some people sort of are, are great at making their own with paints and sprays and everything else. I don't like to get messy. I like to keep nice and clean. So what I'm gonna do is bring in one of our designer paper pads, and this is Toffee Apple really, really rich in colorways. So if I open these up, I've got these in one of our storage folders. One, it stops the papers getting dog-eared, but two, it means what I can do is have a look at my design and see which one I want it to work with. So again, you might think, oh, that's a little bit too busy, a little bit too green, that's nice. But again, it takes it away from the design. So what you'll notice that each of our toppers, uh, not our toppers, our eight by eight papers, have a, a more vibrant side and then a softer tone on the reverse. See, I quite like that. And when you move it around, it sort of changes the design of the card that you're making. So again, this one's a little bit too busy. 
but that works quite nice on the back. And again, ooh, a little bit too dark. Maybe if that was in white, that would stand out better. So again, just have a look. And by having it in here, I'm constantly handling these papers, but I'm not damaging them. So that's why the storage folder is sort of great for that. So let's have a look. Mm, not so good on that one. Looks really nice and warm on that one. A little bit too busy. That's quite nice, the, the rich greens on that one with the, the highlighted areas. Way too busy. And then on the back, a little bit muddy looking. No, that's definitely not gonna work. That works quite nice. That one definitely is no good. So just have a look around and see what papers you've got um, and see which works for you. So I've already decided on my one that I'm gonna go with this one. Now, when we look at the front of it, you'll notice that it really is and it takes away the actual design of the birds and it, they get lost. Whereas if I go for the more softer tone, they stand out a lot better. So I've taken a piece of this and I've already trimmed it down to size to go onto my card blank. So if I bring my card blank into place, so this is a eight by eight card blank, which we also have available on the website. And now I need to decide whether I want a top opening card or a side opening card. What I don't want is an upside down card. So make sure I'm gonna go for a side opening, I think on this one. So, 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 so. It should be ho, 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 ho really rather than so, so, so. So you can see here, I've got the really vibrant side and then I've got the softer side. So maybe to do a little bit different, I'm gonna go with the softer side there and the vibrant side there to give it some contrast. What do you reckon? Mm. Where should I go? No, go as planned. So, so, so. You think I'd get out of saying this by now, wouldn't you? I'm going to run some tape just around the edge. I remember when I did my very first YouTube, I think I said so. I did a competition to see how many, for people to count how many times I said the word so. It was really funny. I run the tape runner just down the edge of this one here. I can't even think what the project was that you could go back and have a giggle, but it was one of the, definitely one of the early ones I did. And pop that on there. So now we've got the effect that it's in two parts and I'm gonna take my little birds and I'm gonna pop those just on there. So for this, I'm gonna use a wet glue. Um, I'm bring a piece of paper in underneath so you can see. So with a wet glue, it gives you the maneuverability. And all I'm gonna do is just put some dots of glue in certain places just to hold it in place. Depending on what cardstock you use or paper, what can happen with the, see how this is, I don't know if you can see whether it's bouncing up and down, because there's a little bit of buckling. And the reason for that is because it's just the pressure in the machine. But once I've put the glue in place and I position it on my card, what I'm gonna do is run it back through the machine and take them, let the machine treat it as a mangle. So, I'm gonna pop that just there. Hold that in place, press that down. And then I'm gonna turn it over and rub from the back. If I try and rub from the front, I'm likely to catch the design. And as I'm rubbing, it's gonna sort of just rip, which I don't want. So that's in place there. I'm gonna take my plates from there. I'm gonna pop cut it there, not the cutting plate, the frosted plate, and then I'm just gonna use the clear plate. So all I wanna do is just use the die cutting machine as a mangle, um, just to apply pressure and flatten it. There we go, so you can see now that that's perfectly sucked down. And because I didn't use too much glue, I didn't get the mayonnaise effect where it sort of all squidges out from underneath. So I'm happy with that. So now let's make it a Christmas card. 
I'm going to take some of our word chain stamps. I'm going to use Seasons Greetings and I've already put them onto our mounts. I'm going to ink up the stamp using a black archival. And we're going to pop Seasons just there. I remember doing a card once and what I did was I was using the season greeting stamps and I did it back to front so it said greeting seasons. So there we go, so we've got that one there. And use the greetings. I mean you can put anything on here really, but because I'm doing a Christmas card, I thought it would be nice just to show you the versatility of the designs. So we're going to press down on the flat of the handle. And there we go, we've got a really nice crisp image. Now I want to introduce some colour to it. So what I'm going to do, I'm using some Faber-Castell pencils, but if you've got the Pergolina pencils, they're going to work great, or any sort of pencils you've got in your collection. And then all I'm going to do is just colour in areas of it. And because I'm using black card, I don't need to be that careful when colouring in. If this was white card, I'd have to be careful of sort of like staying away sort of a little bit from the, the die cut image. And if I go upright, I can get right in close. And it's amazing how these colours just sit on top of the designer papers. So we've got a little bit of red there. So now, these little wrens become little robins. And there is no skill required whatsoever in doing this. There really isn't. So this would be great, you could sort of do a load of these cards and then give it for the kids to, to colour in. That would keep them quiet for a bit, wouldn't it? And then we just need to put a little bit of colour into some of the leaves. So I'm going to use a yellowish colour there and you don't need to colour it all in you just sort of highlight areas just to sort of bring a little bit of depth to them so I don't know if the camera will pick this up or not but what I'll do in a moment is I'll hold it up so you can see up close where the colour has been added and rather than bore you with colouring it all in, I'll just do a couple of these leaves because there's a few more little finishing tricks just to add in. Okay, so if I hold this up now, I don't know if the camera can sort of pick up those areas where we've just added in the colour. Can see. <coughs> Excuse me. Right, so it's still not looking very Christmassy, so I think with Christmas, it needs a little bit of bling. So I'm gonna use um, a Wink of Stella glitter pen, and then I'm just gonna color in, and can you see how vibrant now that red looks? It's got a real nice sparkle to it. So I'm just gonna put some glitter in there, and then we can go in and add some into the leaves as well. Sorry, I forgot you was watching. I get so coloured, carried away when I'm colouring. <laughs> and then just a few more little finishing touches. I'm using a Pergamano white gel pen. And I just wanna just test it onto piece of black scrap card just to get it going. Now with the gel pen, what you don't want to do, you don't really want to go far. If you go fast, what happens is that you don't get really good coverage. So the slower you go, the better the coverage of the white ink flows out. Can you see the difference between the two? I'll just hold it up slightly. So you can see here where I've gone a lot slower, it's a lot more whiter than if I scribbled it out. So I'm just going to add some little sort of highlight into the, the beaks, just to make it stand out a little bit. And then just put a few little white speckles on his chest. 
And because I'm going on top, sometimes you may need to just go back and just test it on some black card just to get it flowing again. And then I can add some little detail dots onto the leaves just to make them stand out a little bit. You don't have to do it on all of them, but it just gives that a little bit more detail and definition. And also it's knowing, see my voice slows down when I get colouring in. It's also knowing when to stop and not put too much on. And I'm just going to go around on this one just here. And then let's have a look at the, the words. So we can sort of tie it in. We can just put a few little dots in a few places. And you don't have to do all of them. But we can just add some little highlights, really. They look like little neon lights, don't they, on Christmas tree? Illuminating. Again, we'll just go down. And his voice slows down and it slows down. So I've got a dot in there. So you get the idea of just by using a little white pen, the difference it can make. So rather than bore you and then the guys back at the office having to fast forward it, let's bring in the one that I finished just so that you can see where the differences lie. So on the finished card that I've already shown you, you can just see I put a little bit more whiteness in place. Um, some more white on there. I've actually gone over the um, the words with the sparkle pen as well. Um, so it'll just, it depends how much you want to add to it really, but it just shows that you, these birds work perfectly for Christmas and also throughout the year. So I hope you've enjoyed today's um, little tutorial. I know I've enjoyed it, getting ahead on the Christmas card making as well. Um, if you've liked today's tutorial, then like and subscribe below if you haven't already. Um, check out Barbara's blog, which Barbara blogs every single day, which is barbaragayblog.com. And if you like the products that we've used today, then check out our website, claritystamp.com. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you again next time. Bye.